through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 239. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to do our DVD rundown for the week of March 19th. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting that end of the year push coming out. Yep. Some pretty decent stuff. The so. holiday and Oscar buzz movies are making yeah. their way to uh, your home video library. Yes, exactly. And some award caliber mm -hmm, projects, mm -hmm, perhaps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some new, some old, you know, yeah. all good. Let's uh, start with the big name release of the week, yes. though, and that is The Hobbit mm -hmm. from Peter Jackson. Uh, you know, an unexpected journey. Yeah, it was an unexpected we, we, title after yeah. a colon is really what it is. <laughs> we have to remember, because there's going to be fucking three of them, so... Desolation Ugh. of Smog. Best title ever. That, that's a good title. But that should... I, I would have been okay if they just went with An Unexpected Journey, Desolation of Smog, and whatever the hell the third one's going to be I just one. Just Desolation of Smog. There and back smog. again. That's, uh, yeah. Colon, The Hobbit. Yeah. Or do we even need to put The Hobbit in? Does anybody not know? Really? Let's just rewrite it so it's all about the smog now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Living with Smog, yeah. the L.A. story. Oh, nice. uh, I, I just like <laughs> Wrong kind of smog. Screw the Hobbit. Let's yeah, just make yeah. it all about the dragon Dragons. kicking ass and yes. stealing gold. That's Dragons real... are, you know, yeah. they're in right now. So do they we... ever really go out? Is it really a map no, for dragons? Never no, been no, out no. For dragons. Okay. Them and ninjas. Yeah. Um, so there's a Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray DVD, ultraviolet digital combo pack. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, Peter Jackson being a, you know, Pimp. digital. <laughs> uh, Lover, he's always yes. ahead of the curve, pushing the envelope. I'd be interested with the fact that this was shot in what the 24 48. 48 that's right, normal's 24 48 frames per second. How that will transfer over to home, I don't think they did at all. I don't think, no. I don't think at this so point, pretty I, much completely useless from unless you saw it in the theaters. Um, what a surprise! Well, I mean, Another convention that you, nobody cared about. If you had those like LCD TVs that are was at 120 hertz, you already sort of had that effect to so, begin so with. It's so it's just like it to a certain extent, it's like 3D, where it's like now obviously we have 3D television, but before. Before and up until very recently, it was like, see it in 3D in the theater or don't ever see it 3D again. Yeah. That's pretty much the same. Because, and you know what? It's probably not surprising considering how few people gave a crap. Yeah. It was not, it was not great. Not well received. But in terms of the special features, it's kind of surprisingly light. I mean, there is a Probably series. saving them up for a trilogy. Well, there is a Peter Jackson's production videos, which mm. I believe he did with, like, King Kong, mm -hmm. um, which is almost a little over two hours worth of stuff you know there's start of production location scouting filming in 3d post-production overview so it covers a lot of those bases mm -hmm. but that's pretty much it yeah so there's no as far as i know there's no feature commentary or anything like mm -hmm. that i mean you know it is kind of telling that <coughs> this is the first movie in his lord of the rings uh foray that has not been nominated for best picture hmm well, See now, maybe the people have spoken, Peter. Um, well, maybe it should have just been one or two movies. I don't think there's a maybe about that. I think it definitely it should, have should have been one or, at the very least, maybe, yeah. kind of, sort of, possibly, if it's necessary, two movies. I mean, it's it's relatively fun, so I'm not going to hate on I it I know a lot much. of people out there like it, and they went and saw it, and they were blown away by it, and I was not one of them. I enjoyed it in 2D, I will say that, much more than the 48 frames per second, so for what that's so more... So maybe on home release, it'll actually be more yeah, popular. Maybe it'll be less people it, bothered by yes, it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, next up, we're going to do another one, uh, part of the... Um, I don't know, rise of the raunchy female comedy. Yeah, yes. Um, post uh, Bridesmaids, mm -hmm, that is mm -hmm. Bachelorette. Yes. This is the film starring, let's see, Lizzie, Lizzie Kaplan, Kaplan, Kirsten Dunst, Isla Fisher, and, and Rebel uh, Wilson. Good old Rebel Wilson. About a uh, group of women going on a bachelorette party with mm -hmm. a woman who's not necessarily a friend of theirs. Yes, and, and that's of, Rebel Wilson's character. Correct? Yes. Yes, she's the bride to be. Yes. Um, now, never really quite achieves the bridesmaids type level yes. of humor. How but surprising that a movie trying to be a movie that already existed didn't do it as well. Uh, you know, it's not. It's, it's more so just the fact that it's in some ways feels so similar. I mean, mm. Bridesmaids, Bachelorette, could you yeah. try and market it? <laughs> any, know, and uh, to be fair, I hear that they were, you know, being made or already in production yes. at the same time. So, you know, yeah. it's not really fair to it say. It would be like off. if you made a movie called uh, The Night After the Crazy Party about some people who on a bachelorette bachelor party uh, did some drugs and forgot about things the night before. Right. And you had a fat, hairy guy and you had a, you know, it's, it's yeah. like, come on. But you know, nevertheless, it's 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 okay. It's got its moments. Yeah, it's and got Adam Scott in it. I love Adam Scott, so I'll just and Lizzie Kaplan as well. I so love regardless Kaplan. of how well the movie might be, I will pimp it. For and Rebel well. Wilson, she's on yeah, the that's too. true. She's been kicking it. In terms of the release, though, it's fairly mundane. 
There is a feature commentary from writer-director Leslie Headland. Mm -hmm. There's some behind-the-scenes featurettes. And then there's a bloopers reel. And that's it. Really pretty light. For a film that already had sort of a mixed response, it yeah. seems like a, um, I don't know, a, a kind of underwhelming release. Yeah, so. kind of just like, well, I guess we got to release it. <laughs> moving on. Yeah. yeah. But Like we will be doing. Moving to the on. Next, yes, moving on <laughs> to a more noteworthy one, a Best Picture winner. Yes. A nominee, I should say, and that is Zero Dark Thirty. Yes. <laughs> this came uh, in a Blu-ray, DVD, ultraviolet combo. Mm-hmm. Um, Pardon, Spencer. He's slowly dying. Yes. Thank you, South by Southwest. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you gave him joy, but you also took it out of his body. Exactly. In terms of special features, you know, this is the story about capturing Osama bin Laden. You yes. think there'd be plenty of material you to would talk hope. about. Sadly, there is quite a little bit. <laughs> it's probably because it's all classified. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. There's one targeting Jessica Justine, which is like five minutes long, that takes mm -hmm. a closer look at the actress's work in the film and the character she plays. Cool. There's a 10-minute featurette about the compound at Abataba, Abadaba, Abadabad. Whoo! Yeah. I don't know. Where Osama bin Laden actually uh, was. Arabic word. <laughs> I don't even think it's complicated. I just can't pronounce it. <laughs> no, I think it's complicated. <laughs> but, you know, that's sort of about where they actually caught up with yes. Osama. There was a cast and crew discussing the pictures, background story, and mm -hmm. Bigelow's work, which was like four minutes, and then there's one about the military seal gear in the movie, which is like which is all seven minutes. fairly legit. I thought four-way view goggles <coughs> that they had on those were actual well, goggles the seals used to it. give peripheral I mean, vision. If you think about like how detailed was it, Mark Bigelow was in terms yes. of writing the film, Catherine Bigelow was filming, it makes mm -hmm. total sense. But, you know, nevertheless, that's like Maybe 30 minutes worth of material. It's pretty pretty light. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is pretty light. I think it's also interesting that something I just randomly picked up looking in the movie is that the, the whole climactic finale of the mm. film with uh, raiding the compound is like a 25-minute long mm. sequence, which is only a few <coughs> minutes less than the actual sequence itself took in real life. Yeah, if you watch the movie, you would hope it'd be pretty quick, because <laughs> shit starts going sideways a little bit. But so, you know, it's one of those things that in retrospect, I think, is when we look back at, like, historical moments or, mm. you know, things like that, like, you know, like, the Twin Tower explosions and all those very horrible things like Oklahoma City, when you look at them in such a condensed frame of time where you're watching a film in real time about a moment and then you find out that that's essentially the real time of how mm. it happened it was literally that short something you could watch that's interesting in yeah. the final closing act of a film the real time element of what it was about that's true so. that's a good point i mean it just seems like a film that would be right for discussion you know, discussion about the comment yeah, the controversy nominated. about yeah. it yeah about torture. Um, you know about a commentary with uh, mark bigelow and Kath or sorry mark um uh, Mark Bowl, yes, Catherine thank you. Bigelow, yes, yes, yes. Um, could have easily done a commentary since mm -hmm. they spent so long. Yeah, the, the, on it. the production because when they first started making this movie, he had, wasn't dead. It was about the the, the right. end, yeah. the catch that didn't go anywhere of Osama bin Laden. So I mean, so many things about like you know dealing with classified information, what you had to change, what you didn't. It doesn't yeah. have to be specifics to carry out, but I think there's so much. This is a real world picture that got to at least best picture nominee. There, should, there you hope there'd be more fleshed out, but. Yeah. Nope. nope. Um, yeah. Maybe they'll wait until the 30th of uh, next December to have a, Maybe. a appropriate... I, I suspect, you know, with all the controversy, they just didn't really want to deal with it. So they sort They were of... like, oh, it didn't win? Blah. Yeah, probably, sadly. <laughs> but, you know, a very good movie, nevertheless. It yes. comes in a lot of different formats, mm -hmm. so it's sort of like a decent release, yeah. I guess. Yeah, You guys um, just rented at Scarecrow. Yeah. But one that you could buy, on the other hand, is the Criterion release of Badlands. Yes. This is the Terrence Malick's uh, I don't know, original film, first film, mm -hmm. whatever you want to go. Uh, Martin Sheen, right? Martin Sheen, yes. Cecily Spacek, mm -hmm. um, based on the story of Charles Starkweather. Um, That's right. Which it's loosely based on. Yeah, but he was uh, dead by the time the movie was out, but the lady, I forget her name, yeah. was not, so they had to that's why they had to change names in the first place of the yes. characters. And appropriately, they have the 1993 episode of the program American Justice about Charles Starkweather, which the film was based on. Nice. Uh, additionally, there is a Making Badlands documentary uh, with actors Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek and the art director Jack Fisk. Also, it's got a 4K digital transfer Ooh. approved by Terrence Malick. Ooh. And since Terrence Malick is known for his visual work, yes. it's very lush and beautiful. Yeah. Of all the people to get, you know, 
a 4K transfer. I think he's up there oh, in yeah. contemporary filmmakers yeah. that deserves it. Um, you know, it's got some interviews with associate edi- editor Billy Weber and executive producer Edward Pressman. So it's just a very packed release yes. for a film that was very highly regarded. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Sadly, you know, this once is what, again, 30 years for it, right? 30? 40? 40. Dang, 40 years since that. Basically, became. for. The first 40, 40 years, you know, Terrence Malick did one film every time. Oh, that's years. right, yeah. So, you know, pretty amazing, but nevertheless. Um, anyway, join us next week for our DVD. <coughs> Spencer will still be dying. Rundown <laughs> for uh, the week of March 26th. Yes. So as you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number, 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on blip.tv. We're on Miro. We're on Roku. You can check in and get glue. You can head over to iTunes, give us some reviews. Check <coughs> us out on YouTube. Leave some comments. Please we'll do. Fire back at you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side of the side. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.